So you may have seen the post on Facebook about this. Um, what we are doing right here, we are actually not stancing the card out because that is not the fastest way around the track. What we are doing here is we have removed the spring entirely and reassembled everything as much of a pain in the ass as it is on these cars um, with the strut, with the strut mount and everything attached except for the steering we have the tie rod removed that way we can swivel everything back and forth nice and easily and what i have done is i have jacked up the car or jacked up the uh, lower control arm so that we can basically find out exactly what our hub measurement from here to the fender well is and find out what our optimal uh, or not optimal, but find out what our maximum bump travel is in relation from the hub to the fender. Um, one thing I did before starting this is I measured it at stock ride height with the weight of the car on, on the tires. Um, and that measurement was 364 millimeters for my 2019 GTI Rabbit Edition. Um, and what we're looking at right here with my 245 40R17 Kumo V730s on 17 by 9 uh, Koenig hypergrams, decagrams, hypergrams, hypergrams. Um, what we're looking at here is 291 millimeters from here to the fender. So based off of doing that, We've got like just a little bit of clearance right there. So this is like our worst case scenario. So now that we know the measurement from the hub to the fender, we can remove the wheel and tire and we can jack this right back up to the same spot. And we can take a peek inside there and we can figure out exactly how much to trim our bump stop since I have a set of lowering springs on the way and we wanna make so sure. So now with our wheel removed and the hub at the proper height, Pleasant little surprise here is uh, the shock is all the way compressed with zero bump stop. Now, obviously, we don't want to be crashing hard shit into hard shit, so we will be trimming the bump stop, but we're going to go about it kind of conservatively. All right, so according to 034, these springs should give a 28 millimeter drop. So, well, you know, 1.1 inch drop. So we got the uh, hub height set back to 28 millimeters lower than full bump, or I'm sorry, 28 millimeters higher than stock ride height. And it's kind of awkward, but I've got a tape measure shoved in here and we're looking at about 45 millimeters worth of available shock shaft. So we can use that to figure out how, where the trimmer bump stops. So right here, we've got a stock unmodified bump stop and we are sitting at like 54 maybe 55 millimeters total we have 45 millimeters from of a shock shaft available at ride height or what we hope will be ride height so we're basically going to be trimming this thing right off here and we're going to try something what i'm going to do initially at least is what most people do and trim off just this bottom uh, little beehive thingy of the bump stop. And what that will do is it will be just enough to just barely not be touching the bump stops at ride height, but as soon as you start cornering, it gets on them. And it's going to, you know, this is, being on the bump stops isn't necessarily a problem. These aren't like super duper hard bump stops. You can, uh, you can use them for fine tuning. So this is what they look like after trimming. They're down to 40 millimeters now. All right, so the last step here um, before we start to throw the spring back on is I have the bump stop installed and it is on there with still no spring, obviously. And it is fully compressed just about with uh, this very sketchy jack stand setup, but I do have the car start just starting to lift off of the quick jacks. And I've already measured from the center of the hub to the fender liner or to the top of the fender and we're at 300 millimeters, so just shy of our 
um, just shy of our, you know, full with, without any kind of cushion. So we're just going to roll with it like this. All right. So based on the measurements I took, um, aside from being useful for figuring out a starting point for messing with the bump stops, we've established a few very important limitations of the MQB chassis. Number one, we don't really have a lot of bump travel available, even in stock form. Lowering the car one inch cuts out approximately 40% of the available bump travel. That's huge. Number two, piggybacking on number one, um, it is not the shock or the strut that is our limiting factor in bump travel. Um, it's the tire. Um, at least if you have OEM fenders or any kind of reasonably sized, you know, track focused tire on a nine inch wide wheel, eight and a half might buy you a little bit of clearance additionally. Uh, my 17 by nine combo with the 245s is actually shorter than most. Um, it's free lowering with no real negative impacts on suspension geometry. You run into some brake fitment issues if you want to put like a massive brake kit, but it is what it is. Moving on, number three, uh, stock suspension depends heavily on the bump stops, even in stock form. This is nothing new. A lot of manufacturers employ this kind of tuning from the factory. Mazda Miatas are one of the best handling cars, you know, made. Um, they employ a stri similar strategy. Now, granted, weighing a thousand pounds less, having double A arms, and not being wrong wheel drive also goes a pretty long way to helping them out too. Um, but back on topic, uh, bump stop tuning works well when the entire system works together. Uh, that's the tricky part. Uh, top level race teams, they do the same thing. And you'll find among people who track Miatas and BMWs as well, using their bump stops to supplement, you know, roll uh, stiffness. There might be a lot to be gained by focusing some time and energy on this particular part of tuning the MQB chassis. Now, I don't want to get into the topic of spring rates too much, um, but it's a granted, it's a given. If you have less travel to work with, you're going to want a bit more spring rate. Uh, these 034 springs that I just installed are supposedly about 13% stiffer than OEM at 210 pounds versus 185 pounds per inch. Um, personally, based on my own back of the napkin math, I would initially try to go for a rate stiffer than that. And I did actually try to install the APR springs. Um, I'll leave a link to a video about that whole ordeal above. Um, but it turns out they're not compatible with camber top hats. So I took the known path of picking the springs from the same manufacturer just to get something on the car to lower it a little bit because I wanted to try out the ball joints and um, you know get it moving without having things hitting the body. So knowing now that uh, the bump stops are used even in stock form, I'm a lot less worried about the lower spring rate of the 034 springs. Um, and I'll probably try to pursue some fine tuning with the bump stops as long as I don't find any, any real weird issues with hopping the curbs at VIR as it is now. Um, either by changing out the bump stops entirely or by shimming them with suspension packers. Suspension packers are just little plastic uh, rings that have a split in them that you can just slip on and off the shock shaft super quickly and easily. Up until now, I've actually had very good luck on the stock springs with just upgraded shocks, sway bars, and some added camber. Um, last year consisted of running the 034 camber plates and PowerFlex offset lower control arm bushings to get the added camber. And then I ran the H&R 26 millimeter rear, 26 millimeter front sway bars um, on decent, and I found out that in the dry on decent 200 treadwear tires, uh, the front bar on stiff is actually faster. I'll leave a link to the article in the description where I tested the front bar on soft versus stiff at a uh, private track day at VIR last year. Um, in a nutshell, it doesn't provide a whole lot more like peak grip, but what I found was it allows a lot more trail braking into a corner. Understanding how the bump stops are used on the stock suspension, I think it's because it keeps the front end from getting even harder into the bump stops as you are combining braking and cornering inputs, basically because the chassis doesn't dive as hard onto that left front corner, it's able to support the weight of the car a little bit better and keep it from uh, losing camber in the process. Uh, now, the County Special Actives, those things are freaking great. Um, those really helped in finding a lot of speed in the S's at VIR. 
Uh, the stock shocks, they have a little too much rebound and not enough compression, and the Coney Special Actives basically fix that, especially in the rear. The rear is where most of the problem was, in my opinion. Um, here is a chart summarizing all of my ride height and wheel travel measurements for reference. This will also be posted at www.datadrivenmqb.com uh, in the link below in the description. So basically, now that we have the working and usable range of suspension defined as far as, you know, what is practical to use, this means we can look at the next couple of topics that'll be coming on the camber curve and on bump steer and how those two things are affected by our base ride height and when we throw another change into the mix as well. So hope this was helpful. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them. Uh, check out datadrivenmqb.com and check it out on Facebook as well. Hope you guys have a good one.